Hello. I think we Hi. are recording. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pamela and Rebecca, and we're going to do a little intro for those of you who don't know who we are. Um, for my people, Pamela, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Thank you. Hi, everybody. So my thing that I do is I help people keep the promises that they make to themselves. My title is a business and success coach, but I really help people understand what they, how they are operating from or how they're operating. Are they operating from a position of strength or weakness? And what is it that they want to achieve and how is it that they're going to get there? So I help people achieve their goals and keep their promises to themselves. How about you, Rebecca? That is in such great alignment. And that's why we're coming to you today to hopefully give you some hot tips. Um, and I am a dietitian. And I help women with non-judgmental weight loss, hormone balance, and help women learn that they can eat foods that they love and still lose weight and live their best life. Yeah. So we got together because we help our clients. We have different um, jobs, essentially, but we do similar things in helping our clients. And we were just chatting that it's a tough time in the world right now. And a lot of people are stressed out with schedule changes and quarantine life and, you know, gaining weight, maybe not being as productive as they want in their life, not achieving their goals, putting their goals on hold um, because of this whole stress, but stressful situation. And we, we thought we could offer some tips for you. Sounds great. Yeah, it's not, it has been difficult and um, for many, many people, but for those, but there is a portion of people, there is a percentage of people that while the fear is there, and obviously there are terrible things that are taking place, um, they still are managing. And there's an analogy I like to utilize sometimes. Uh, we are either on autopilot, um, we are either a passenger or a pilot. We are either a bull with a nose ring that is being dragged around by that ring. And the people who are actually managing their stress, managing their life, keeping routines so that they can have some sort of normalcy um, are those that are not allowing themselves to be dragged around by the information. And those are people who are remaining consistent and are choosing specific things. And today is about help sharing what those folks are doing um, in order to help them maintain that schedule. It's so true. I'm hearing from people. I have some people, some clients that have reached out to me who started during this and just said, this is kind of going to embrace this time as, you know, a time when I'm not being pressured to go out to eat and go to parties and do all these things that are mm -hmm. sort of disruptive, disruptive to my normal life. And I'm going to le learn to live my best normal life. So when all those things come back, they won't throw me as much. Um, and so they're like having the best time reaching their goals. And then, of course, my heart goes out to the people who are feeling just totally overwhelmed and chaotic yes. with, you know, the kids at home and trying to work from home and or losing their jobs or whatever's happening with, with people where they are just feeling like they can't get it together. And that we're just trying to help you today. That's who we're talking to today yeah. are having are just struggling right now with with um, with routine and getting kind of getting your act together and reaching your goals while life is so stressful. And we have a ton of compassion for you, right? <laughs> I, we have a ton of compassion for you and I can't speak for Rebecca, but you know, I call it falling off the wagon, right? There's certain wagons, there's the band wagon, there's the alcohol wagon, there's whatever. But if you are remaining, when we fall off the wagon of consistency, I know, I, again, I can't speak for Rebecca, but I know I have, even during this time when this first hit, I was extremely overwhelmed and I have a solid routine and I completely went back into old patterns and behaviors for a good seven to nine, 10 days. And I, the, the best part about that though, there are ways to get back on what the goal patterns and, and what it is that you were trying to achieve. And, um, while we do have compassion for you, we also lovingly and firmly support the idea that you have the power and are empowered within you to make specific choices for yourself, to move yourself from where you are currently to where you want to be. That's so good. I just had a client tell me, it's not that I don't fall off the horse anymore. It's that I get back right up really mm. quickly instead of letting it just go into this hole. I call it the downward spiral, like the 
well, I'm stressed out, so I'm going to eat and drink foods that aren't healthy, and I'm too tired to work out, so I'm just going to sit on the couch and Netflix and chill, and kind of like this downward spiral of getting more and more tired and more gaining more weight and feeling worse about yourself. And what, it, what we want to shift that to is the positive spiral, which is like taking a few steps, one step, towards bettering your, yourself and setting a goal and achieving it. And then you're starting, then you feel good and you eat some healthy food and you get more energy. And then you have that energy and you want to move and you want to move and then you move and you feel even more energy. And we know we want to shift anyone who's in that negative spiral. We want to help you grab that and take the horn out of your nose and get into the pot yeah. spiral so that you can start taking better care of yourself in a very simple way. So we're going to just offer you some simple, simple tips today. Quick tips. Yeah, and before we do, actually, congratulations to your client for who's who's recognizing that it's the the episode. I call them episodes or hiccups. They 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 get farther and fewer in between the more consistent you are, or in terms of if you were to fall off of a wagon, um, you get right back on much sooner. And those get farther and fewer in between the more you practice a certain set of skills or or what have you. And this is all about like letting you know that you can do it. There's even one push up for the first day is taking an action towards the upward spiral, and that is going to enhance the next day. So you can do it. You guys have it within you. It just, and thank you for joining us, by the way, because hopefully we'll, you'll find that the tip, tidbits that we share today will be helpful for you. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, one of the first things that I find is helpful in a time where your schedule is all thrown off, um, may sound counterintuitive. It's like your schedule's thrown off, everything's haywire. And the first thing that is, that helps a lot of my clients is actually setting up goals for like a specific part of a routine. And for me, a lot of the times that starts with a food routine, like let's start with finding a, like three simple breakfasts that you really enjoy that make you feel amazing that you look forward to but they're easy they're fast they fit in, into your lifestyle and you just eat those three breakfasts and some people might be resistant like I'm so overwhelmed right now I don't even want to have any sort of routine but what I'm gonna tell you happens for almost everyone is that if you just pick the three breakfasts what happens is you don't wake up with a background of, well, what am I going to do for breakfast? And what, you know, and if, and well, this shows up and then I eat something unhealthy and then I don't feel good and then I'm tired. And then, and then it's this like the downward spiral for the day. But if you wake up and you know, you've made some kind of, you know, overnight oat or something delicious the night before you've prepped and you can just wake up and eat and you enjoy it. So you're looking forward to it. There's no stress around it. It's simple. And you know that you started your day with something healthy. Then you feel amazing for the next couple of hours and feel proud of yourself that you got, you set a goal and you accomplished it. You ate something healthy and you feel amazing. And then that's the positive spiral start to the day. So I find it super helpful to just get, get it together to pick two or three breakfasts. It could be the same breakfast every day. So okay, whatever, whatever you like, how, however much deviation or variety you, you like. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have the same breakfast I eat on my work days and then the same breakfast I eat on my days off that takes a little longer. So, but that routine, I don't have to stress about it. It's just, you're building it in right for yourself. The, I want to touch upon the counterintuitive before I get into a tidbit. Most people, when they are about to make a change, a healthy change for themselves, or when they want to, they desire to make a healthy change for themselves, they view it as more painful to set it up, set, some, set yourself up for success. They, they find the effort that goes into the process of setting yourself up for success more painful than actually staying where they are at. Am I, is that making sense? Totally, yeah. So when you are making habits, changing your habits for the better, everything that you are about to do is going to be counterintuitive. It doesn't, it's so awkward and unfamiliar. And that's what this is about. It's making what is unfamiliar to you familiar and what is familiar to you unfamiliar. I'm going to say that one more time. It's going to make the, it's, it's a process of making the unfamiliar familiar to you 
and the, and making what is familiar to you, like poor choices or poor not eating breakfast or um, talking to yourself negatively, whatever that, that is, that's familiar to you, making that unfamiliar to you. Um, so I love the word counterintuitive. It's actually one of my favorite words because it is the truth. It's, a, it's the truth. It, what you do to get yourself out of something or to move you from where you are to where you want to be is completely counterintuitive because you've been operating for so long the same way and it's, it's and that same way is so familiar to you. Um, you mentioned breakfast. So morning routines, uh, I, I stress very strongly and they are, in fact, I invite you all to Google and research the importance of morning routines and who has morning routines and you will notice Folks like Oprah Winfrey and um, your most more successful, most successful individuals all have morning routines. They look different because everybody is different. But the one thing that I'd like to invite you to do is begin to create a morning routine for you. Uh, the work that I do is about the business of you. And when you have a morning routine that's all about your family and your, and your business, you are taking energy and time away from the business of you. And when your foundation of the business of you is not shored up, is not strong, your energy weakens, your decision-making abilities weaken because the energy is not there. You're not fortifying you. You're not fortifying the business of you. So having a morning routine surrounding protecting your peace is really extremely important for you to maintain and keep the promises that you're making to yourself, including eating great eating habits, for example, or even job searching during this time. It tells you, it shows you that you can keep promises to yourself. So how do we do that? One thing that I would like to invite you to do is not, not look at whatever it is that you want to change as the whole picture it is. I don't know. I think it's a Chinese proverb and I have no idea why they chose the elephant, but the, the proverb is how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. So whatever it is that you are, I mean, it's just, I don't know why they chose the elephant, but that's, <laughs> and so don't mean to offend animals. I love animals. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when you're looking at the habit that you are trying to change, meaning let's say you are super stressed and are having a very difficult time right now, creating any sort of normalcy or routine for yourself in general right now, what is the one thing that you can take out of that entire picture. And let's just work on that one thing for a few days. Let's make that one thing that is unfamiliar to you familiar so that you can experience a win because a win is a win no matter how small. And even like I referred to that one push-up, if you do one push-up today, that is a win because you didn't do it yesterday or the five years before that. You moved yourself, you took action. When we take action, your success is inevitable. Period, end of story when you're taking those actions. So if you are interested in a morning routine, I definitely recommend looking them up, the importance of them and who has them. Every one of my clients do, I do. And it just makes you in more an alignment, not only with your higher self, but it gives you that confidence that you can achieve what it is that you are looking to achieve. So let's, let's take a look at this. My morning routine includes reading something that's about my practice, my business, my industry, something spiritual and uplifting, and something that is just completely allows me to disconnect, enjoy, just a luxurious kind of reading experience. Someone might say, I love reading, but I don't have time to read. I'm going to argue that and challenge you and say, you do have the time. It's about making the time. So that's a whole other episode that, we're, <laughs> that we can talk about. But let's take a look at one thing that you could do for yourself to fortify you and your spirit and your energy. I'm choosing reading for this example. I invite my clients to read three things, as I mentioned, something from their industry, something um, that is spiritual and uplifting, and something that just allows them to dis disconnect. Well, I don't have time to read. Do you have time to read one page from each of those industries? Could you make the time a minute and a half, two minutes, that will allow you to disconnect, that will give you some soul-nurturing food from the, from the spiritual text, and something that's going to move your practice or your business or your job search forward. Could you do that for a minute and a half? 
a minute, one page from each of those industries or those components. If that feels doable to you and I'm willing to bet and I know that my clients have had, who have had a hard time are now doing that because they move forward with it. They took that action of just that one page from each of those industries or those categories. So that's what I'm inviting you to do. Reading is something that I do um, and I'm inviting you to do the same for a morning routine. It just allows you to disconnect and be, puts on an armor for yourself for the day. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, I love that because sometimes I think when I hear morning routine, I've seen so much on the media of like, get yourself up and do a, go to boot camp workout and do like, do all, get all these things done, do your hardest work first. And like, I'm not a, I'm not a morning person. I'm not, I'm not most energetic in the morning. I'm most energetic in the midday. And so for me, when I hear that type of morning routine, I'm like really turned off by it. And that's great. If you're the person that wants to do all those things and that is how you choose to take care of yourself, that's yeah. great. But if how you choose, like how you choose to take care of yourself is silence. And I think even that person who's energetic in the morning could benefit from some quiet time in the morning. Um, just to read, just be silent to, before we go out into the world of phone and, and kind of overwhelm. Um, mm -hmm. I love that idea of just taking a few minutes. It's not, not too much, like one page each and it's doable. And then it's so true when you, when you make a promise to yourself and you keep it, you feel proud. And then, yeah. well, maybe I can do another thing. Maybe I can schedule five more minutes mid morning and do another reading for five minutes. And mm -hmm. that feels good. I know in the quarantine, um, and this, I, I, it tends to be that if I even schedule me time later in the day, mm -hmm. it gets pushed out. So I like to walk and I was in the beginning of quarantining and quarantine kind of planning my walks for a late afternoon or early evening. And what would happen was like all the other people's needs would come in and I would end up not doing it. And then I'd be mm -hmm. sad at the end of the day that I didn't get to do my walk. And so what I'm doing now is kind of what you're saying is I'm incorporating that into the morning so that I make sure it gets done. And then the fires get pushed off instead of the, or the emergencies get put off instead of um, my walk, my time for me. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you for doing that because that will ripple effect. That will ripple out to your clients, all of the relationships that you have with other people, and that will continue. You know, that's, um, that is the business of you. When you take care of yourself first and foremost, it's no different than the analogy of the airplane mask. You know, when the oxygen mask drops down, then you place it on your child. It's, it, there's truth to that when you are taking care of yourself first and foremost and what it is that you need physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally first. It is not selfish. It is not self-serving because it really is allowing you to show up at optimum level for everybody and everything else afterwards. If, you are, if you're starting at a deficit, you're going to be contributing deficits, no matter how good or how things are going. And so that, that you make a really beautiful point. I, I love that. I thank you for doing that. Um, it's a process of slowing down so that you can speed up, actually. I don't know if, if you've heard that before. Absolutely. True. Right? It, it, that is counterintuitive. But when you do, when you, if you, instead of waking up and going, ah, I got to homeschool my kids. I got to do this. I got to get this mail out. I got to... That's not doing anybody any good, <laughs> including the collective consciousness, if we, if we can go there for a moment. So by taking care of yourself and tuning within and, and slowing down so that you can speed up to contribute to the, in those categories throughout the rest of the day or the week or what have you is so beneficial. Um, and that brings me to the next tip that I actually want to invite you to do, and that is leave your phones outside of your bedrooms. Do not invite the phone into your bedroom. If you need the phone for an alarm, buy an alarm <laughs> clock. If you need two alarms, buy one for the side of your bed and buy one for the opposite side of the room. Um, the reason why I say this is because I actually have a hard time with, I, I, 
I, I'm not addicted to food. I'm not addicted to substances, but I am addicted to checking my phone. And it's my responsibility to quite frankly, take care of that. <laughs> because if my face and all of my attention and my emotions and everything else is in my phone, whether it's on email or sending a document or on social media or whatever, I'm not doing myself a favor and I'm not doing my husband a favor. I'm not doing my clients a favor because that is the frenzied emotion and energy that I start my day with. If I leave my phone in my room, my husband and I have not been left, have left our phones outside of my room for over a year and a half. And what happened to us was we actually started to sleep better. We felt better. We felt like we were rested in the morning. We felt like our energy wasn't being tapped or that our attention wasn't being divided. And we started to do what we began to do before the phones, you know, which was just kind of snuggle and check in on with, with one another and love on one another and start the day really beautifully instead of just reaching over and checking to see if we had an email, a text or on social media messages. So I really do invite you to buy an alarm clock if you don't have one, leave your phones outside of your bedrooms for the night. And that way there, when you wake up, if you have the books next to you, or if you have, um, well, I'll leave that with the books, then you can turn to that and read your pages for the day, or you can sit in silence. To your point, Rebecca, sitting in silence is beautiful. It allows you to it allows you to disconnect from autopilot and make conscious choices. And if you do that first thing in the morning, it sounds kind of silly, wake up, you know, sleep and then spend time in silence. But it really is one of the most effective things that anyone can do for themselves. And to help yourself do that by anchoring, anchor that new habit for yourself, leave the phone out of the bedroom. Yeah, I love that. And if you have a house full, uh, if you can at all arrange to go for a walk, which is how I really, that's my silence. It's just walking mm -hmm. by myself. I have my best thoughts, like my best, most clear thinking. It's like breathing, being in nature and doing that sometime in the morning just feels so good. Even if it's literally for five minutes, just around the yes. do some breaths, like look at a tree, watch a squirrel, watch a bird. It's spring. So it's kind of fun out there. Um, so important and the tips that Pamela is sharing and along with eating a healthy breakfast um, this morning routine I talk about hormone balance for weight loss a lot of my clients are trying to manage their weight um, who isn't nowadays if you're not good for you but <laughs> the rest of us are. <laughs> and, um, those who are if you start your day with stress that is going to throw your hormones totally out of whack and set you up for a weight gain day. We need to calm ourselves down ideally multiple times through the day, but that's a whole nother video. And it's a whole nother video to talk about the science of these hormones and what happens when we're stressed out all day and making poor choices. But um, in a nutshell, this calm of a morning routine and then having a healthy breakfast um, will set your hormones up to decrease cortisol and stress hormones and let your body naturally balance the hormones like estrogen and progesterone that make you feel really good and have you have you have good energy and good moods throughout the day and uh so that's an extra yeah, that's a great one. balance that's awesome you know you mentioned um staying you know nature and um being in nature actually helps with those stress levels too yeah that you know, I mean, think about it. We, oh my gosh, if you have been, if you are someone that is in overdrive consistently, you're probably haven't slowed down enough to pay attention to what nutrients or um, what it is that you are putting into your body. And we are what we consume. I know people don't like it sometimes when I say that, but it's true. We, we are, we are the product of what we surround ourselves with and what we ingest and what we ingest and surround ourselves comes out in some way, shape or form. So if you're ingesting, if you are allowing stress and continuation of being on overdrive, that's going to come out in negative reverse effects. So to, to Rebecca's point about, um, the stress levels and starting your day off in a way that sets you up to alleviate the stress to slow you down again is 
most of us don't want to do that because quite frankly, most of us don't value ourselves. Most of us don't feel that we're worthy of it. And that's at the core of most individuals that I speak with. And some way, shape or form, we've been trained to think that way. We've been conditioned to think that way. And that's why the habits that we're talking about or tips that we're talking about could feel like a lot of change or could feel difficult to change. But that's why also Rebecca and I are introducing the small steps, just one thing super small to affect the course of what it is that you, the, the, to affect the course that you're on. Um, that was a bit of a long-winded uh, scenario uh, that I wanted to share, but I have another tip. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm done with tips, but uh, for today, I don't know about you. Maybe when you speak more, I'll have a couple more. I don't actually know how we're doing on time. All right, we have a few minutes. Um, Another tip that I want to introduce you to is pay attention to the words that you are speaking. If you are hearing yourself say, I have to, that is adding so much more stress than what you are currently steeped in. If you choose, if you choose your words consciously and precisely, you become the matador versus the bull with the ring in the nose. Yeah, I said that right. Sometimes this, um, sometimes I transpose my words, so I have to check to see if I said something right. Um, so instead of saying I have to, and listen, guys and gals, this sounds so trite, but it is super duper effective. The words I get to, I get to take a walk in the morning. I get to make lunches for my children. I get to homeschool my kids. It, it puts a level, a power level, pl it plugs you right into an empowerment so quickly and, and, and helps you make even better choices. And here's one more word that I want to interject. The word choose. I choose to, again, puts you in a place of power and strength versus weakness. Because at any given day, we're either operating from strength or weakness, love or fear good decisions or bad decisions. So when we, we are super hyper vigilant and conscious of the words that we are speaking, that's describing our day, you will change your day and your life eventually, because what we speak, we speak into existence eventually. I was, we're on the same page. I was thinking the same thing when you said earlier um, that I hear a lot of, I don't have time. And I used to say that too, um, because we, all have full lives, you know, everyone has a lot going on. But the truth is, I have time. And sometimes I choose to watch Netflix on the couch. <laughs> sometimes Which I is totally to okay. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, I choose to sit on my phone and scroll mindlessly. And that's okay, too. But I'm choosing to do that. And it's not that I don't have time to do something that someone might say is more productive. <laughs> But I have, so that's just acknowledging the truth is I have time, but sometimes I'm choosing to, to use that time for kind of meaningless activity that isn't bettering myself as a human. Um, and sometimes I choose to take the time to read and do things that are fulfilling and make healthy food and, you know, go for a walk. And all of that is okay. But, you know, as we're stressing today, making little healthy shifts and how you choose to spend your time will make a big, big difference. Um, I want to make sure people know how to get a hold of us. If you would like, if you're just kind of in the down, downward spiral or if you're just wanting a little extra accountability and support um, in making healthy changes and getting yourself into the positive spiral, I want to make sure that they know how to get a hold of you, Pamela, and me. And so, um, I offer a free consultation, actually. If you are interested in coaching, I will talk to you just to, to figure out your situation, see what's going on with you right now, and see if it's a fit to maybe work together and get you set up with a starter plan one way, either way. Um, and so what I'm going to do is put a link in the comments below this and in the email when I send this out. Everywhere around this, I will put a link of how to get a hold, how to apply for my coaching. And uh, Pamela, how do they get a hold? Can I put a link? you as well yeah same thing it is it's an application process and i know that rebecca is very her clients are, are very successful and as well as my own i'm very grateful and blessed to 
literally say that 100% of my clients are 100% successful in achieving their goals. And so we are able to offer our services and I'll, leave the, I'll provide the links as well. I'll, I'll most likely put a calendar link for you to set an appointment and it is also a free consultation. Great. And I, I want to reiterate, um, who is, who is the person that you want to work with? Like if, if they're out there, um, what are you going to help them with? I just want to make sure that they're clear. Yeah. So again, I'm a business and success coach working and focusing primarily on career development and leadership development or leadership presence development. But what generally happens is whatever their goals are, so they achieve, they, we create action steps for them that move them forward. And with the support and the tools that I give them, they move forward, whatever that goal is, whether it's to um, find employment, uh, be uh, elevated at work in terms of a promotion, receive a raise, uh, start a new business, whatever that career and leadership type of goal that you have, um, that is someone who I work with. And I work with very motivated individuals and I work with people who are, who, who are ready to take a look at the language that they're saying, speaking with and who are ready to hold themselves accountable to achieve a new way of being in terms of their career and how they show up and contribute in our world. It's such a cool combination of business coach and like living your best life at the same time. It's so much more than <laughs> achieving in business, but it's like achieving and living your best life and your success rate is amazing. So yeah. definitely worth talking to Pamela if that feels like a fit. And um, I am here to help women especially uh lose weight balance your hormones feel your best and lose weight and um we would love to chat with you and we're going to do a couple more videos i think about um the more details of hormone balance and some of the other things that we talked about that we could talk for hours but we don't <laughs> talk for hours today <laughs> And that's true. And actually, let us know um, what questions you would like answered, whether it's uh, living your best life and balancing your hormone, hormones or, or your career. We, we'd love to answer them for you. Absolutely. I will put my email address down below also so you can just message me a question if you don't want to apply for coaching. Just message a question and we can cover topics for you in the future. This was great. Thank you so much for joining us. It was Thank so you. fun. Pamela, thanks for being here. It's very it was a pleasure. It's, a, it's absolutely my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the future ones. Take care, everybody.